In this video, I'm gonna break down all the Zoom meeting controls so you can further explore the vast opportunities to host like a pro using Zoom for online meetings and content creation, as well as how to use those virtual backgrounds. And we'll do that right now. Hey, what's up y'all? This is Brian White and welcome back to Video Zeus. On this channel, we make tutorials to help you spend less time making more videos. If that sounds like you, then smash that subscribe button now. Zoom is a great option for hosting online meetings as well as curating content for later use. Now, aside from being an easy way to conduct a meeting, Zoom is actually packed full of many options to enhance the overall look and appearance of your video stream. Lots of opportunities here, so I'm curious, how do you plan to use Zoom? Let me know in the comments below. Now, the Zoom meeting controls I'm discussing are from the desktop application. There is a difference in features available on the mobile app versus the desktop app. So if you're curious or want to learn about the Zoom cloud meeting app, follow the link up there. Okay, assuming you created an account and installed Zoom, you should see this window here on your screen. We'll jump into our own meeting by clicking on new meeting here to load your meeting. You may be prompted with a computer audio window asking you to join computer audio. Now we're inside our meeting with our video active as you can see me. All right, let's focus our attention on the menu bar in the bottom of the screen. These are the controls. And we'll work our way through each of these menu items from the left to the right. First up is the audio controls, and rightfully so. Audio is by far the most important element of your online meeting, because after all, it's a phone call first and a video call second. We can click on the arrow down here next to the audio button to reveal your audio settings. If you have headphones, AirPods, or a USB mic, you would select them here. Since I'm using my headphones plugged into my computer, I'll stick with the internal sound option for audio as well as for the output option. Now, you also have the option to leave the computer audio and connect rather through a phone. So if you had a wireless headset, you could capture good audio that way as well. Now, clicking on audio settings opens up the main settings window on the audio tab where you can adjust your volume levels and audio sources. Now let's go a little further and explore the advanced button here, where you have a few noise canceling options to further enhance your audio capture. So should you be in a noisy environment, these effects can definitely help. Now whether you have a mic or not, just remember to speak up and speak clearly. All right, let's move over to the video item where by clicking this button, we can turn our video on or off. When it's off, it will show your profile picture. And it's interesting to note that if you signed up through Facebook or Google, it will use the profile pic associated with that account. So take that into consideration when you're choosing not to show your video feed and this image being displayed instead. But assuming you're all about video, we'll click to have the video on for the sake of this call. Now, by clicking on the arrow next to the video button, you open a settings menu. We have a few options to optimize here. First, if you're using an external webcam such as this one, which is the Logitech C920, link for it below, you can toggle between your built-in webcam versus your external webcam. As you can see here, when I click on my built-in webcam, the quality of the picture changes. This is my built-in webcam. Now let's switch it back to the C920, and there you go. You can see the difference. One of the coolest options is to select a virtual background which can transport you from your boring house background to virtually anywhere. So Zoom has a chroma key functionality that can remove the background behind you and replace it with any image you select without having a green screen. And it's exactly what you've been watching the whole time on my Zoom screen. Now when I click on none, this is my actual office background. Now there are a few free backgrounds and videos that you can use, but you can also import any video or image you want behind you by clicking on the plus icon and navigating to that image. Now a great place to find images is at pexels.com, or in fact, I have a Fiverr gig where I'll create a branded background just like this one. Link to that is below. But certainly it can provide a better environment to conduct business versus the background of your personal space. If by chance you're having trouble getting your Zoom virtual backgrounds to work, 
check out this video up here for troubleshooting tips. Next, let's click on video options where again, you can configure your video camera, as well as clicking on this button here to touch up my appearance, which looks to enable a frame blending effect to smooth out our faces. I mean, who doesn't want that? Next, let's cover how to invite people to your meeting. Now on the free plan, you can invite up to 100 participants, host an unlimited number of meetings, and record for 40 minutes with three or more participants on the call. So let's click on the invite button here to send out the invitation to our meeting. If you have anyone whom you've already connected with on Zoom, you could invite them to your call here by a click of a button. You also have the option to integrate your email client here. I personally like to click the button down here to copy the URL of the meeting, paste it into a personalized email, and also include the invitation information, which you can grab here by clicking on this copy invitation link. There, now your invitee has all the information they need to successfully join your meeting. Now let's look at the Manage Participants tool by clicking on it, which opens up the participants window. It's in this window, you'll be able to see and manage all participants in the meeting. We'll click on this more tab down here. Now in an effort to help you manage your meeting better, I like to uncheck the allow participants to unmute themselves so no one can interrupt you. Additionally, you can lock your meeting here to prevent anyone else from joining your call as a whole. I also like to enable the play enter exit chime while sometimes it's annoying it does notify me that people are present and on the call. And a bonus tip, if for some reason you're experiencing feedback or background noise from another participant's feed in the call, you can mute them individually or better yet, mute them all to help you identify or troubleshoot the source of the feedback to help you deliver a better sounding experience overall. Next up is the share screen feature, which is a lot of fun. It enables you to only share certain screens or applications you have open on your desktop, such as PowerPoint presentations, charts, websites, photos, or videos. So it allows you to incorporate those media elements into your meeting, making it much more dynamic. You know, it also helps break up your meeting into a visual experience. So they're not just looking at you the whole time on video. Although now I say that anytime you do share a screen, you have the option of moving your camera feed into the window viewing area like this. If you're wanting to share a video, be sure to check these two boxes down here to share the sound coming from the computer over your call, as well as selecting the optimized screen share for video clip. Do this to ensure proper playback of your videos over the call. Also available is the option to show a whiteboard, which can allow you to take notes or otherwise illustrate your talking points on a virtual whiteboard. Additionally, you can also choose a certain portion of your screen as well as connecting a second camera angle, which is pretty cool. It's also important to note the level of engagements participants have during your meetings. Once a screen is being shared, an annotations feature is enabled, which can allow participants to annotate or otherwise edit your screen by drawing or typing in a question or remark of some kind. Now, this can be a fun way to promote engagement during the meeting. Have a question? Hey, just notate it on your screen. You can also disable that feature if you're not a fan by clicking up here on the More menu and disabling attendee annotations. One other item is to click on the arrow next to the share screen and go to the advanced options where you can set who can share their screen on the call. If you're the only one sharing content, then click on only host right here to prevent any other interruptions during your meeting. Next up is the chat feature, which opens up this window to allow you to live chat with participants. You can use this to keep conversation active during your meeting with the live chat content. Now with the paid version, you can hold private conversations with participants. Next up is the recording feature inside Zoom. This allows you to record your meetings. Now, why would you wanna record your meetings? Well, one purpose would be to capture details from the call for later organization, or in case someone missed it, you could share it with them. The other purpose would be to use its contents to repurpose it into edited audio clips or video clips to share across your socials. Prior to recording, be sure to choose your recording display so you can actually choose what's being recorded. Is it just you on camera? Does it show the grid with all your participants? To do that, just click up here to select a recording display. 
I've got a full video on how to record better Zoom meetings right up there. So once recording has begun, it can be paused and continued at any time. And to end the recording, you have to end the meeting. So once you've done that, you'll see a conversion progress window appear, and then it will open up a folder containing the newly converted video and audio files. Now, mastering the Zoom meeting controls will help deliver a better meeting. But first, if you haven't already downloaded my Before You Shoot guide, please follow the link in the show notes below. The guide will prove as a useful resource for each and every one of your video creations. If you've enjoyed this video, you'll really enjoy these two videos to learn more about all Zoom has to offer. Once again, thanks for watching Video Zoos, where we help you spend less time making more videos.